Can you talk about some of the subspecialties within ethical hacking? We mentioned red teaming and blue teaming and, and, and some of the, the different sort of quote unquote sides. Um, like what, uh, in speaking in, in, in regards to these sort of subspecialties of white hat hacking, what types of people uh, have you seen that excel at these different varieties of, of ethical hacking? What are, what are some, some qualities that you think make someone a better, say, penetration tester versus a red teamer versus a, uh, you know, reverse engineer and things like that? Yeah, uh, I go back to the the traits I talked about. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I have read a lot of the uh, blogs that our students post after they have earned their OSCP, and some it took them multiple tries. And mm -hmm. actually, those those people I admire and I love their story. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, really, what it is is, is that um, know what you want, and then be willing to work hard. And then do not, for example, you know, OSCP is very famous. And with that, it is true. It probably guarantee you, if not a job, definitely guarantee you an interview because it, the hiring managers will notice. But do not study for the exam. Study because you want to learn the mindset. You want to learn how to work like a security professional. And those things show through during the interview. And then when you get stuck, that's one thing really nice about the cybersecurity community is that there's so many communities out there. Get involved. Either get involved there to ask questions and learn from the other fellow uh, ethical hackers on yeah. their journey, or get involved as a way to share your learning. And that when you are involved in the community, and you know what? A lot of the companies, a lot of the hiring managers, they are there too. They notice you. So when you are yourself and you are really trying to apply and uh, these traits that are important to succeed, that is where you get noticed. And I cannot tell you how many people that we hired are from the community work that they have done, either a blog post or walkthrough they did to share with the community, we really reach out to those people. We proactively recruit people like that hmm. because we know those are the people that will succeed. So I want to say to your listeners that you want to do that. If you don't know IT, learn the basic IT stuff. If you know the basic IT knowledge already, you can go earn one of the cert, but study for the training, for the mindset, for the yep. skills. Don't study for the exam. You will rob yourself of the opportunity to really learn something that will set you up for success. And when you learn for the right reason, you learn the right habit, it will show through during your interview. And that's how you get a job. The job can be a SOC analyst, could be an incident responder. Yep. It could be a, a pen tester. But I also want to say pen testers require a lot more hands-on experience right. in networking system admin so if you haven't done any it work it's not realistic to think your first job into security is a penetration tester so get your foot into the door do any job and keep on learning if a penetration testing is what you want to do you will get there in due time new episodes of the cyberwork podcast are available every monday at 1 p.m central and don't forget to check out our hands-on training series cyberwork applied each week, expert InfoSec instructors teach you a new cybersecurity skill and show you how that skill applies to real-world scenarios. Go to infosecinstitute.com learn. Stay up to date on all things cyberwork.